potassium chloride we are using for drying the, the sample. And they always ask me how much should I add? And I just say add enough. How much is enough? Enough is when you add the um, drying agent or anhydrous agent, it doesn't clump up. When it clumps up, that means that you, you still have some more uh, water molecules or some traces of the you know, uh, water or moisture still. So you add just a few more um, pellets of or mesh of the calcium chloride and anhydrous calcium chloride. The calcium chloride now is moving around. That means I have added enough. Going to cover this as soon as possible because I don't want moisture to get in. And using a parafilm, I will cover the, um, the flask for the anhydrous agent to do the job, meaning it's going to remove the moisture from the organic, uh, organic layer. Uh, for the dry sample, now I can measure the mass for percent yield, and I will do the chemical test for the functional uh, group. Because of the cyclohexanol is not substituted and it gives only one alkene product. We have one product here, uh, but we can check for the uh, CC double bond with the two um, chemical tests. So I'm just going to wait two minutes, two, three minutes for it to dry. And uh, measure the mass uh, using a pre made flask again. Okay, we need a uh, pre made container, pair off the balance or scale, place the clean, dry flask. And if it's more than one group working here, you must label your container. I have the mass of the empty flask and I would transfer the organic layer, transfer the organic layer into the into empty container without getting any solid in. This is called decanting. and measure the mass again. Okay, now we have the mass of the product for our calculation for percentile. We do the chemical test at this point. Uh, for the uh, chemical test, which is basically testing for the CC double bond to make sure that it has formed, uh, we have two tests. One is bromine with methylene chloride, and uh, two is a, which is called test for unsaturation. Uh, we take five drops of the sample and just count the drops. One, two, two. five drops of the sample, and going to dissolve that in uh, 20 drops of the, you can use dropper or just carefully use this dispenser and count the drops for about one milliliter. It's just a solvent. It's not going to make a huge difference if it's one drop higher or lower, uh, about 20 drops of the sample, about one milliliter or one centimeter height of the sample in a small test tube. And we add one drop of the bromine in methylene chloride. What happens or what is the positive test? The positive test is if the color of the bromine disappears. So the color of the bromine, and I covered it with the parafilm because it's outside of the film, is orange color. If that color disappears, that means uh, the compound that we are testing with uh, contains 
CC double bond, a carbon-carbon double bond. And you see that it did disappear completely. And that was the first drop that disappeared. I'm just showing you for the record for more drop that it did. I hope that you did catch one of those and it is it keeps disappearing. So added five drops and it did disappear. Definitely there is a CC uh, double bond, the color of Romy disappeared. A second test is um, use of permanganate. So again, I'm going to use five drops of the product. I'm covering with parafilm to make sure that it doesn't evaporate and we don't get the smell or odor of it in the lab. Five milliliter, uh, five drops dissolve in 20 drops of the acetone. And that would be one milliliter. You can measure one milliliter. You can count 20 drops, as I said, or go about one centimeter height of the, of the test tube if you are using small test tube. So I have the solution of the product of cyclohexene in acetone at one drop of potassium permanganate. What will happen here as a positive test? We have a CC double bond. The purple color of permanganate would disappear and it will form brown color precipitate. So I put too much, uh, two drops instead of the one drop. Um, and I'm just going to add another drop of the, the product. The color, the purple color is now disappearing and a brown color is, is forming. I don't know how visible it is, but I might wait for a couple of minutes for that uh, brown color to appear completely and is visible even uh, from the camera, um, your view, so we can record that as the evidence for presence of CC uh, double bond. Okay, the purple color is gone. Um, the brown color appeared. If you see this purple, I'm going to show you make a blank sample with just the acetone and the permanganate so you could see the purple color when there is no uh, CC double bond, how would it look like? So with this comparison, now you can see it clearly that there is a color change. And you want a white background to see that color better. See that this is the blank sample and that's our test solution. And also the residue of the per man uh, manganese dioxide is the precipitated in the, in the test tube. Um, last test, which is called a physical property um, compared to the other two that they were chemical tests, is um, measuring the refractive index of the product. First, we need to calibrate our um, refractometer. This is a digital refractometer. So when we press cow, it's asking to add uh, distilled water. And uh, we add the distilled water. It's going to read the distilled water as a standard. And as soon as it gives us the okay, that calibration has been, um, that calibration has been complete, we can go ahead and start the sample. So that it says um, calibration success, uh, we are going to clean up using a can uh, the distilled water, and um, apply the sample, few drops of the sample, this after the calibration, apply a few drops of sample, 
and press B. Okay. Is reading the sample going to take a picture and also show you the number, if you could see it from there, but I will add the picture to the, to the video. And the data or information you have for this experiment is mass of the product. The mass of the product, you can calculate the percent yield based on the mass, but it's not going to be accurate because we, first of all, we said between nine milliliter and 10 milliliter. And when we stop the, um, stop the distillation, we don't know if there was any alcohol left in the, in the boiling flask or, um, or not. So just to show that you can do the calculation for that purpose, I want you to uh, do the calculation for, for percent yield, but it's not exact measurement. So you may not, don't be afraid uh, or don't be disappointed if the percent yield shows lower number. Uh, the chemical test needs to be included in the data and also the refractive index, which the, the number needs to be adjusted based on the, uh, the temperature um, compared to the literature value and uh, be used as identifying or, or determining purity of your um, sample. That's the end of this um, experiment and thank you.